Do you know when potatoes are ready to be dug? Hello everybody, this is Deb from Just Do Something Homestead and today we are digging potatoes. I have raised potatoes for well over 30 or 40 years on my own. <laughs> and the one question I'm asked more than anything else is how do I know when it's time to dig my potatoes? This row here is the last row of potatoes that I planted and they are completely green. So if you're looking at your potato plants and all you see is green, these are not ready to be dug. But as we go over row by row, you're going to see that each row is more ready than the last row we looked at up until where I just dug potatoes. In my opinion, these are too far gone. I don't typically leave them in the ground. A lot of people, they let the plant die until it's crispy like this, and then they leave the potatoes in the ground for a couple months. Their philosophy is it will dry the skins and help to preserve them. And although that is true, in a sense, it also opens the door for predators to eat your potatoes. And when I say predators, I'm talking about things like moles and voles, as well as insect damage. Anytime I left my potatoes in the ground for more than a month, they were eaten alive by predators. These potatoes are gonna be dug today. And if you are a follower of my channel, you know that we have been in a major, major drought for well over a month. And in that time, I never once watered my potatoes. It's just not feasible to water this many without a water source. But thank goodness I use woven weave fabric and that kept the moisture in. And even though we're in a drought where most people are not getting potatoes, our potato harvest is huge. And although the harvest is huge, the potatoes really are not. They are on the smaller side. We have a lot of average ones like this, but we don't have a lot of massive ones. In the past, we had some huge potatoes. For us, it's a numbers game. You want a lot of potatoes, you plant a lot of potatoes. We planted five rows, 180 feet long, and then we have a sixth row that's about half of that. So if this plant is too far gone, but this plant is too early to dig, how do I know when is the perfect time? This row right here is what I'm gonna harvest today. And for me, I think this is perfect. Uh, that one could have gone maybe another week or two, but this one is ready to go. And the reason I like this, most of the plant is dead. You're not going to get any more growth when the leaves are gone. And the other thing you need to be careful of is the weather. Always check the weather and see what's going on. For us, we're not getting any rain, but if you were expecting rain, dig the potatoes before it rains. I love to give the stem a tug and have these potatoes still attached. It just makes it so much easier to dig. And our ground is as hard as a rock. So thank goodness we rototilled this very, very deeply and we used woven weaves so it grew on top of the ground and not in the ground. And I have been out here since 6 a.m. That's because every day is in the high 90s, but at 6 a.m. it was 68 degrees. So I'm gonna dig as much as I can until it gets hot. And although the majority of the potatoes we have are huge, we also have some itty bitty. Make sure you keep these. These make the best little either oven roasted potatoes or fried potatoes. And when I saw them at the market, this is what people are looking for. And once in a blue moon, I get one down deep in the soil, which usually I don't with the woven weave. And these are so hard to get out because the soil uh, is so hard. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to get this one. Nope, I'm gonna have to go get a tool. When you use tools around your potatoes, don't go and try to grab that potato and pull him out. You are going to ruin him by pulling off the skin. So what works for me is to loosen up the soil all around it. I told you it's really hard. And then I'll be able to move that potato out. I'm in a lot of beginning gardeners groups. And unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation that is going around about growing potatoes. I wanna talk about some of those real quick. 
First off, none of my potatoes are flowering, but if they were, this was where the flowers were. And on these groups, they're saying, oh, cut off all the flowers as soon as you see them to make bigger potatoes. That is false information. Potato plants, just like any plant that flowers, benefit from bees pollinating those flowers. Cutting them off is not gonna give you bigger potatoes. The second big rumor that just drives me crazy is make sure you hill those potatoes. Again, that is absolutely inaccurate information. The only potatoes that need to be hilled are indeterminate varieties. I don't raise any indeterminate and I bet most of you don't either. That's because indeterminate will grow potatoes along the stem but determinate will not. They will grow them going out from side to side under the plant. So hilling them is a huge waste of time. And when you have hundreds and hundreds of pounds of seed potatoes that you planted, you wouldn't have time to hill them anyway. Before I started using woven weave fabric, I did hill them around the base for one reason and only one reason. If I saw potatoes that were exposed to the sun, that's the only reason. That's to prevent them from turning green because you don't want to eat green potatoes. You can cut off the green sections, but if the majority of the potato is green, you're going to end up wasting it. And honestly, now that I use woven weave, I get zero, yes, zero green potatoes. The other misconception is make sure you water your potatoes every day. Potatoes do not need to be watered every day. In fact, it can cause more problems from potatoes rotting. As I already mentioned, I never watered these. And the fourth one I already touched on, they're saying, oh, make sure your plant dies and leave it in the ground for at least two or three months. That way your potatoes cure. Again, you do not want to leave them in the ground that long because the chance of something eating your potatoes is just too strong. Our potato patch is in the middle of nowhere. Originally, we were gonna build a house right next to it. Well, that didn't happen. And because of that, I needed a crop that I could plant and ignore. And potatoes is that crop. I put those seed potatoes in the end of March, beginning of April, and I never come back until it's time to harvest. Another misconception. Are my potatoes ready? Oh no, my grandfather used to plant them in March and didn't pick them until October. Again, it depends on the variety. Did you know there are three types of potatoes? There are early varieties, mid-season, and late season. Early season are often your red potatoes, and that's exactly what this is. This is red Lasota. They grow in as little as 60 to 80 days. And the best part about that is once these are dug, I can replant an entire another section of potatoes in their place. And that doubles my yield. Mid-season are typically white or yellow potatoes. They often take about 80 to 100 days until they are ready to harvest. And the long season ones are often your russet potatoes. They can take all season, and that is what most people think of. You plant them in the spring, you dig them in the fall. Not sure what you have? It's pretty easy. Just look up the variety online, and it will tell you what type of potato and how long it is until harvest. And if you're not sure when to pick your potatoes, you can always dig up one plant and decide if they're large enough for you. And talking harvest, that leads us to the next huge error that new gardeners do. When people tell you that you need to toughen the skins by laying them out, that does not mean by laying them out in the sun. By placing your potatoes in the sun, you're going to have them turn green. And I've heard of people who lost their entire harvest because they put them in the sun for a week to harden. The majority of my first crop is sold at the farmer's market as fresh potatoes. Don't wash them, just wipe them off with a cloth because if you wash them, any of your potatoes will not store as long as unwashed. And anything that is not of high quality that I do not sell at the market, I can for ourselves. There's nothing wrong with this potato, but it's not pretty 
and people want pretty produce. Split potatoes occur when there's a change in the moisture. When we planted in March and April, it was extremely wet. In fact, I was really worried that my potatoes were going to rot. Thankfully, they did not. Um, but as the season went on, it went from too wet to too dry. This has healed over, so this potato is not bad, but these are the ones I said people don't want to buy them. Um, so I will peel it and cut it and can it. So instead of lasting for a couple months in root storage, I can store them for years by canning them. And let me tell you, canned potatoes are delicious. What I appreciate is when I work all day teaching school, I can come home, open up a can, rinse them, and throw them in a frying pan. Those potatoes are ready in 10 minutes. Okay, let's get back to digging potatoes. And this is my trusty helper who loves to help me. She's actually looking for toads among, among the plants. Did you ever hear a toad talk? We used to hear this noise under the woven weave and I thought they were moles because Betsy was chasing them. Turned out they were toads because they make this little squeaky noise. Any other time I leave them in the garden, but when we're harvesting and the dog's helping me, nope, they have to go on the other side of the fence. Seems like the biggest potatoes grow in the middle of the row versus the ends, and I think it's just because it is tilled a little bit deeper. Ever find a slimy, rotten potato when you're digging yours? This is not a rotten potato. Well, it is rotten. This is your original seed potato. That's what started your plant. Sometimes that original seed potato is still attached to the bottom of your plant, but often it is not, and it starts to um, decompose. After I dig all of the potatoes, Jim comes back with a shovel to see if I forgot any. Now, I keep telling him I don't forget no potatoes, but strangely enough, he always finds a few that were way down in there. Well, this is a first. I couldn't get the staple out, and then I realized it had a potato growing in it. Whew. Oh, my goodness. Well, I dug that one portion of a row. <laughs> it's not even a row. Uh, one third of a row and I have about 50 pounds of potatoes and I folded up the woven weave that was still laying down on the ground from when Jim and I dug last night. I dug about 50 pounds of potato. Not bad for a woman who's pushing 60 and a dog who says, you know, it's a little too warm out here. If you know anything about farming, your harvest always comes in when the weather is far from cooperative. So when I came out, it was in its 60s. Now it's already in the 90s. <sighs> I have sweat dripping off my eyelashes. I have an order for 50 quarts of potatoes for tomorrow morning. So tonight I'll dig this last little section and we should have plenty. And if you enjoyed this video on knowing when to dig your potatoes and how to dig your potatoes, please like, subscribe, and share. Have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye.